Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. This week, we're going to talk about something that is very common these days, and it is anxiety. In fact, this is, statistics say that, I mean, 9 out of 10 people, I believe, is have some kind of anxiety at some point in their life. So, how are you doing today, Jennifer? Doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I know we we decided this was an important topic after we both discovered that we have both um, had periods of very high anxiety. You know, anxiety was just a normal part of my life for a long time. And I just thought it was part of my personality. I didn't realize that something was quote unquote wrong with me. Um, I just thought I'm just a really hyper stressed out personality yeah you and me both um but you know the medical field will tell people that anxiety is a chemical imbalance but this isn't true anxiety is really about your habits and about the thoughts that you choose to entertain and yeah. it also goes back you know a lot of things start in childhood and I had some traumatic things happen to me in my childhood and studies are showing that if you had a traumatic childhood or if you grew up with an alcoholic parent, you have a 50% chance of being a, have anxiety disorder. And so I was lucky enough to grow up with an alcoholic father <laughs> that traumatized us. And so I, I've had my anxiety battles, but today I want to, offer people hope and there's ways that we can overcome this yeah and so that's another similarity that we have i had the same the same thing a lot of fear growing up yeah yeah it's yeah, yeah. You and, little kid right and there so what is the chart i can't think of the name of the the chart or the test you can oh, take um, that would tell you all of the different there's all these different um, events that could happen and all of those, you know, you add them up and it gives you um, what your marker is as far as stress. Do you remember what that's called? Uh, I don't remember the name, but I did take it. I had a therapist. He made me take it. Um, uh, <laughs> names <laughs> are, <laughs> hey they say anxiety does affect your memory too <laughs> yes it does it does yes <laughs> for sure and definitely for me I was trying to remember I was trying to think about what that's called but anyway whatever it was if you have a certain number of them yeah then um, you're more likely to have you know high anxiety and chronic illness and and things like that too and I don't remember what the number was but I remember mine was higher than whatever the the number was it was just too many too many events occurred in my childhood childhood related stressors holly it's, it'll pop into my head while we're talking yeah yeah anyway so yeah that has a lot to do with um your start in life yeah it, it does yeah it, but it's i mean there but there's other people too that have that had a good childhood but they grow up and then their their lot their jobs are stressful. Their their life is stressful in general. And anybody can develop this disorder, I guess is my point. And for a lot of people, it starts with they'll be sitting there relaxing one day and all of a sudden they their heart starts racing and they think they're going to have a heart attack. And then the the vicious it's a vicious cycle because then anxiety it gives us physical symptoms and so a lot of people start to fear the physical symptoms which drives anxiety and it keeps anxiety alive and so it's just it's a tricky situation yeah the guy the okay for example my therapist he had it for 25 years and i picked a therapist that went through this i want somebody that had experience in this because People, you cannot understand this unless you've been through it. So this guy, he had terrible anxiety. Like he was afraid of death. So when he walked, he, if when he walked into a hospital, he would black out. He would pass out. He was so scared. Mm -hmm. And the way he overcame that, he said, 
He took a whole year. He got a job at a hospital on purpose. And so every day he'd walk in there, he would start palpitating and, you know, get tense. But every single day he would walk into the hospital. It's called uh, um, exposure therapy he would use. Mm. And after a year, after a year of exposing himself to this fear, his body was able to get over that, that particular fear. And so anxiety and exposure therapy is very interesting. You pick some of your greatest fears, some of your greatest anxieties, and you expose yourself to a little bit at a time to this fear. Not too much initially because this is going to make you more afraid, but just a little bit every day of this, whatever the fear is. And eventually you train your body not to be scared of it anymore. Mm. Interesting. So you, anxiety is a habit. So habits can be broken. Yeah, but it takes a lot to get there. Oh, it takes a lot. It's This is no joke. Yeah. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but, mm -mm. you know. I, I went for years with the heart attack feelings. Like, I really oh. thought I was having a heart attack. It was Arr. for several years. I'm going to say probably 10 to 15 years. Oh. Yeah. Where I just, and I thought it was like food related or something, you know, it was like indigestion from food, but now I know it was, it was just stress. It was all stress related, just too much, too much. I don't know if it's too much adrenaline or what, but I just was always go, 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 you know, the perfectionist, you know, trying to please everybody. Yeah. Kind of mode. I think there's a lot of that in there too. Oh, yeah. Being a people pleaser is so stressful because you'll learn that no matter how hard you try, there's some people you will never be able to please. Right. Right. That's hard. So I think a lot of that was there. Yeah. I would get these horrible um, chest pains and sometimes I'd even just like beat on my chest. Like, oh, it's got to go away um, or lay down on the floor. And so I'd just be laying down on the floor. But when I think about it, I said 25 years. 15 years, probably 15 years. Um, I would have panic attacks too. So it wasn't just the heart attacks. It would be like, I remember going in a grocery store, like if I was in crowded spaces, it was like all of a sudden I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get out. And yes. we were in a grocery store in downtown Atlanta one time, this was back in college, had a grocery cart completely full of groceries. And all of a sudden I was like, I got to get out of here. And so we had to just leave the grocery cart and leave. And luckily, um, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, he was like, okay, we'll just go. And, uh, which was good. It's, it's wonderful that he's always been able to, um, react that way. That is and good. I, Cause a lot of people don't understand it. They, they act like, oh, just, just calm down. Just relax. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> That's the oh. worst thing ever. <laughs> if I'm all worked up and you tell me to relax, you better stand back. <laughs> <laughs> well, just see the, when you, when you learn the uh, physiological effects, what happens is when you get stressed out, your body releases, it dumps all this cortisol and adrenaline in your bloodstream. And this takes hours for your body to clear it. You can't just relax it away. It has to, the body has to clear it. it and in order to clear it, you have to, you do have to start to calm down, but it could take hours to calm down from a panic attack. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten about that. There's a, this is bringing back up some memories here. We're working through some stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of things that uh, I guess I had a lot of fears too. So fear and anxiety that I didn't think about. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> I guess fear of failure. That's probably the biggest one. Well, that's still one of my big fears. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah you I know. Just, I have to tell myself, just do it afraid. Do it yeah. afraid. Well, there's coaches, you know, I have a coach and there's another coach. Uh, the way they deal with it is um, you have to get over the fear of your physical symptoms. Yeah. And in order to do this, let's say you're doing it, you're, you're working or you're watching TV, whatever you're doing and say your heart starts to race or you start to feel dizzy, whatever your symptom is, you have to train yourself to live with that symptom but still do what you're doing. Like, it, I don't know if you're at the supermarket and you start to feel jittery or whatever, you have to kind of put that into the background and just keep doing what you're doing. 
And eventually you'll train your body to not, to not be afraid of the symptoms anymore. Now, this is a process. It's not easy. I still have my bad days, especially if I had to go to, a, uh, you know, do something stressful, like maybe meet new people or get a tooth pull or something like that. But it's good to expose yourself to all yeah. these things that you're afraid of. <laughs> yeah, the, the meeting new people too, which that, so I wonder how much of that is personality and how much is anxiety driven too. Like I'm definitely an introvert. And so is that from the anxiety and all of that? You know, like if I go, if I go to a party or a wedding or something, I'm, I'm the wallflower. It's like, I am not the mingler. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, I'm amazed by the people who can get up and just work the tables and, you know, talk to everybody and they can tell you everything about everybody. And I'm like, what? you know, I'd meet somebody and they'd say, oh, I went to the grocery store and I met this person and they could tell me their life story. And I'm like, what? You know, I just, I don't yeah. know how people do that. Yeah. And so I don't know if there, I don't know if there's a crossover between introvert and anxiety. Well, uh, I saw, I've studied this a lot because I'm trying to heal myself and I've seen studies now, people, children who had healthy upbringings where their parents were healthy people and they raised their child to be healthy. And they compare this to children who are raised with unhealthy parents. The children who were raised in a healthy household, when they were, they grew up having confidence and they were able to mingle with people. They were able to go to college and make friends with people that could help them throughout their lives. They were able to be social. Social, being social is the key to a uh, successful life. On the other hand, the children who were raised in broken homes, they didn't have those skills. They were introverts. People thought they were weird because they didn't like to talk. And they have a lot fewer um, opportunities in life because they don't have influential acquaintances that can help them get ahead in the world. So your question, it could be a little bit of both, but I think that a broken home probably probably shapes people to become more introverted because they're afraid. And that when I was a kid, I had to kind of make myself unseen and unheard to avoid my dad because I was afraid of him. He was crazy as I, I, I can't use cuss words. He was crazy. Okay. And yeah. so I was like always trying to avoid him. So now in my adult life, I think I still have that trait. I get in a group of people. I try to, I, I'm just kind of, I don't say much and people don't really notice me or, you know. Yes. Afraid to speak your truth and yeah, and say anything because it might be wrong and then uh -huh. you're paying the consequences. Yeah. yeah. But we have to work on that. I mean, I'm working on it. Me too. I'm getting better and better. Yeah. Stepping out there and, you know, just doing videos and putting myself out there and, and being seen, which is something that's totally different than I was oh, a few years ago. You're doing great, by the way. You're all over the place. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I want to be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I want to help everybody. Ah, uh, me too. Me too. Yes. Yes. Um, I just want people to know this information. Yes, it's so important, Meg, because. Uh, so important because some people they live their lives are ruined by some disease right. and they don't have any idea they could heal themselves or at least make themselves a lot lot better you know yes yes for me the anxiety ended up leading to so many health conditions and so um i you know i studied nutrition and I still had all that anxiety and I even took cooking classes all because I wanted to be able to feed my family healthy and wanted to eat healthy. And so I was doing all the things in quotes, living really healthy. Um, I had gestational diabetes during my first pregnancy and we were like, how the heck did this happen? How no one in my family, I was, I was working in the gym. I mean, I was ideal body weight. I was eating all the healthy foods, no family history. And so we couldn't figure that out at all. And then after my second pregnancy is when I had, was diagnosed with autoimmune illness and I had, you know, blood sugar conditions and, and things like that. And I just never knew the stress and anxiety had so much to do with it. And even now, so even 
a year ago or two years ago, um, I got a CGM. I don't know if you know what that is, a glu continuous glucose monitor um, that you can wear on your arm. It's very, very popular these days. Um, there are ways to get them without a prescription now, but um, you are supposed to get them with a prescription. Here in the U.S., it was the only country, of course, where you have to have a prescription for one. Oh, yeah. But I would wear it and foods didn't affect me. But a couple hours after, I would notice it was going up. My blood sugar would be going up. And I was like, why is my blood sugar going up? And like, I would like not eat anything and my blood sugar would go up and it was like, what in the world. And then I realized it was stress and anxiety. Anytime I got stressed out, my blood sugar would go way up and it would stay up And my, you know, I'd wake up in the morning and it would be up. And it was just because I was thinking about all the things I have to do today. And, uh, so it's just, that is, has to be the underlying cause of all of my illnesses, I believe. You know, oh, the yeah. gestational diabetes, it had to be because I was under a lot of stress. I mean, it's surprising that I didn't have high blood pressure too. And then the autoimmune disease and the blood sugar, because we know that blood sugar is affected by um, high stress. Because if you're stressed, your body has to react and you have to have sugar ready to burn for energy. So Jennifer, what are some of the things you do now to kind of manage your anxiety and um, well, i have to um really focus on relaxation meditation um getting outside every day walking making sure like i have a hard fast sleep time you know 10 o'clock i'm in the bed asleep yeah and so i mean i will not stay up later than that occasionally i've had to especially i have a 16 year old who uh, went out the other night, went to Atlanta to a concert. So of course I had to stay up till she got home. Um, and so I hate, I hate that. And it, I pay for it. I, I noticed for days after that, if I don't, if I stay up too late, mm -hmm. if I have a bad night's rest, then I, my whole body is paying for it. So sleep is definitely most important. Um, I do meditation every night before dinner. Um, I have a yoga mat behind me. You can't see I lay on the yoga mat here, put my butt up on a pillow and my legs up the wall. Um, that's a relaxation pose. And I use my Insight Timer. Um, I don't know if anyone, Insight Timer app is free. I don't, I'm not affiliate or anything, but they have these different meditations and you can pick how long you want to do it. So I'll pick a 10 minute body scan uh, meditation and just relax with a hot, um, wet compress over my eyes because of all the, the strain from the lights from the computer all day. Anyway, I lay there for 10 minutes before dinner and that does several things. Number one, it tells me we're at the end of the day. It's time to relax. It's time to shift into a different mode. Um, it gives me a little break. It rests my eyes so they can recover from screen time. And it also prepares me for optimal digestion because we don't digest our foods. Um, we don't even create the uh, stomach acids um, in our stomach, if we're under high stress, if you're under stress, um, people say, well, I have heartburn when I'm under too much stress. Well, that's because if you're under stress, your body doesn't want your stomach to secrete anything. It doesn't want it to be digesting because you don't need to be digesting and having to stop and go poop if you're in danger. And so it slows everything down and you need hydrochloric acid to break down amino acids. So you're not even getting the protein that you need. That's totally way off track. So before I eat, I lay down to relax and get back on, um, get into parasympathetic mode to relax for the end of the day. And then at night, I drink uh, bedtime teas. I alternate them. And so that was something else we wanted to talk about today was different herbs. Oh, yeah. But, um, I like St. John's wort. Um, I really like that one. I use that one. I use that one every night, pretty much. I alternate my other ones, though. Um, I do love uh, lemon balm tea. Um, it's very calming. I've seen, actually seen studies that show that it is as effective as um, prescription antibiotic, not antibiotic, prescription anxiety drugs. Wow. Um, yes, but then I'm just going to have a study for lemon balm because they can't market it. Um, so I love lemon balm. I love passion flower, especially if I if I end up working too late. I have a project going on where many of you know I'm an, I'm an intern right now. So I have projects I have to do. And unfortunately, some of them are late at night. And passionflower stops the monkey brain and the 
the circling thoughts. And so I do, I like passion flower. Um, I like valerian. I know sometimes that works for some people. Sometimes that can be really strong and difficult for some people to get up in the morning. It's probably my favorite as far as I go to sleep when I drink valerian. Um, passion flower, valerian, lemon balm. I don't know. What other herbs um, do you like? Uh, chamomile. And oh, yes. I like uh, black cohosh, um, skull cap. Oh yeah. You know, I told you years, you know, years ago I came across the incurables program from Dr. Schultz, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a formula he had that I make and it's for stress. Um I've I've been making it for years. It works really well. It's uh valerian, passion flower, chamomile. I think it's got skull cap. Oh man, uh black cohosh, I believe. There's probably something I'm forgetting, but it works really good. I can give you the recipe. It like yesterday I was feeling stressed out. I'll, I'll go take four dropperfuls. And man, I feel like I'm on drugs or something. It's like uh -huh. I'm just like, oh, you know. And it helps. I mean, it's like some people call that a crutch because you have to face your anxiety to get rid of it, but it's not really a crutch. It's just a tool to help you on your journey to heal yourself from anxiety because sometimes you just need a break, you know? Yeah. And it's and not something you're going to take every day. It's no, just no. If something happens. Yeah. But you know, if you got to sleep and which Jennifer's talking about sleep is the most important thing for any condition. Um, because when you sleep, your cortisol goes down, your adrenaline goes down, your blood pressure, your heart rate goes down. You have to have that. If you don't have that, then, you're going to feel wired all the time if you don't sleep well. Right. Right. Um, what are some other things that you do? Well, like you, I do a, a progressive muscle relaxation. I try to do that twice a day when I can. I do a meditation from a few years back. I went to a, uh, seminar on dallas with sad guru i don't know if you ever heard of sad guru he's real popular uh he's a yogi oh, yeah. yeah 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 i went to go see him like I'm, my mother-in-law uh, helped me go see him because it wasn't cheap and i'm not making a lot of money right now but i got to go spend the weekend in dallas it was awesome man this guy like okay there's four thousand people i'm sitting in this arena with four thousand people so i'm feeling kind of you know stressed but then Sadhguru comes out on stage and he sits down and he, start, and he goes into a meditation and I automatically feel more relaxed. I'm like, what the? What, what's, what's this guy doing? Why do I feel relaxed? Because he's sitting, but he made me relax just being there. Um, but over the course of the weekend, we learned this meditation and uh, I use it. I try to use it every day. Okay, so I also make sure that I, I exercise every day, but I don't, I lift kind of pretty heavy weights, but most of my exercise is gentle. Like I like to walk. I like to ride my bicycle. I don't just go out there and just push myself like, eh, because that raises your cortisol. Mm -hmm. But moderate to light exercise can actually lower your cortisol. And that's what I usually stick with. Other than my heavy weight lifting, I only do like, even with the, even with the weights, I do one heavy set. And I don't push myself to failure anymore because I might do two or three reps and then go and then that's the day for me. So I don't really get my cortisol up. And then everything after that will be walking, ride my bicycle. I have a trampoline I jump on and I also make sure I get enough water every day, enough fruits and vegetables. And I have five dogs I like to pet a lot, which is really good for your, you know, yes. and, and they won't let me not pet them. Like, are you going to pet me today? Sure, I will, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and then my coach or my therapist tries to teach me about my, um, as anxious people, we usually have negative thoughts about a future event. And he teaches me how to reframe my thoughts. For instance, uh, okay, tomorrow I have a, this is just theoretical. Tomorrow I have a job interview and I'm probably going to fail it or, you know, they're not going to want me. So you reframe that to tomorrow. 
I'm going to have a job interview and it's going to go really well and they're going to love me and they're going to give me the job, you know, but this is a work in process, uh, in progress, because being a human is not easy. And as a human, all you, everybody's listening, they know this. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And changing your thoughts is really difficult, too. I do. Have you heard of Joe Dispenza? Yes. Mm-hmm. I really want to get get into more of his stuff because it sounds very useful, you know? Yes. I know he had a week long uh, program not mm-hmm. too long ago, several months ago. I would love to do that. It's just yeah, money's an issue with that one. But, <laughs> yeah. I, but I've heard of some miraculous things going on at those events, like spontaneous healings and things like that. So, Well, a lot of times if I notice I'm getting too hyped up, I try to remember to just stop and even just putting my hands on my chest and just taking five deep breaths, which we had talked about that one time and just doing that even before the podcast, just to, uh, to chill. Yeah. It's amazing what just doing that can do. Just putting your hand on your chest actually, um, can help a lot. But did we talk about how powerful that is? Like phys- physiologically, they know now that when you take a break and you do some deep breathing like that, it actually starts to lower your cortisol. It starts to lower your adrenaline. You actually can mitigate some of the damage to your body just by taking breaks and breathing. It actually has physical benefits. Yes. Yes. So if you were in a panic attack, um, what would you do? Well, these days, I think the Lord above us, I haven't had one in probably two years. But I was having them so often what I started, I I started to get used to them. And so I started to lose my fear. So I got to where I could be having a panic attack and I would just sit down and kind of relax into it and let it happen. If my heart would be going, I mean, crazy. I, I woke up one day and my heart was probably, I swear it was 180 beats a minute. I must have got a drill on dump in my sleep. That was terrifying. Yeah. The first night, it scared the crap out of me. I think that happened to me maybe five or six times. But actually, after the third time, I, I could just go get up, sit down on my chair and just let it pass. My heart would be, but I would just be like, I'm okay. And, I, and, and look, this might seem morbid, but I got to the point where, I tell if I die, I die because I think that being scared of death will ruin your life because you'll never live a full life. If you're, if you're so scared of dying, yeah, you're not going to live a full life because I don't know. Like, I, I mean, we don't talk about religion on this channel, but I got the point. I really believe, I really believe now that this isn't it and you shouldn't be scared of that. So, but I'm telling you, when I got over, when I said, okay, go ahead and kill me, I said it to myself, this, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And when I said that, my heart started to slow down. Wow. Anecdotal, I know, but I'm telling you, it works. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I want to get over this. And I know that you have to lose the fear of the symptoms. If you don't, you'll never get over anxiety. Right. Right. And I'm not perfect, but. I'm a lot better than I was two years ago. And of course the herbs have helped and just getting, getting over the fear. You know, I know I'm not going to die. I do everything right. My heart's strong and, you know, mm-hmm. very strong in fact. So. Yeah. That's what, one I, of the things, go ahead. I do pray too. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, even just a blessing before the meal is a good mm-hmm. pause. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, what I was going to say was a lot of times if I do that, put my hand on my chest, I just tell myself I am safe. Yeah. Yeah. So I am safe. Is that called the, uh, I've seen that before, the heart meditation, right? Where you put your hands over your heart. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think it's something I heard about in the Heart Math Institute. You heard of them? Yes. Yeah. I'm Very intriguing. Yes. yes. That's some crazy research. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So with heart math, you do you do different meditations and you kind of visualize things and which is wonderful and but they recommend you do it five times a day and uh i don't think i do it five times a day maybe that's something i should work on 
Yeah. I don't think you can meditate enough. And I'm talking about for anybody because yeah. I think, you know, my whole goal is to retrain myself to be a uh, very relaxed. When I was younger, I was relaxed. I had a, like in my early twenties, I had this period where I was just chilled out, man. You know, hmm. when I hit 33, the anxiety started coming. Hmm. So I just think life goes in stages, you know? Right. And I, I haven't talked to my therapist in a while, but he's completely better now. But I asked him, I said, no, I know your, your anxiety is completely gone, but do you have to continue to meditate? He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I have to meditate every day. I can't drink caffeine. I have to watch my thoughts. If you weren't, if he, so this is going to be a lifelong practice. You have to do all these self-care, self-care things, but They're they good feel good. Yeah, yeah, they feel great, man. You know? mm. They feel good and then they help with everything. So not just the sleep and relaxation, mental health, blood sugar, inflammation. Yeah. Yeah. I think it should be a part of every healing uh, routine. I mean, you know, it has to, it has to be. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have an anxiety disorder, you have stress. I don't like we're talking about in America for, for real. I mean, nobody is under no stress, you know? You, you, can um, you can't i mean life is stressful yeah 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 you can't live without stress i had a doctor tell me that um one of my endocrinologists said um you just you can't have stress you can't do anything that has stress and it's like i have to <laughs> drive home in traffic because i went to the doctor near atlanta i was like i'm driving home in this heavy traffic how do i drive home in this heavy traffic without stress how do i go to work without stress you know <laughs> well it's impossible yes yeah so that was terrible advice <laughs> <laughs> i mean even you turn on the news that's stressful you know? yeah i don't watch the news i don't either but there's people who yeah. have it on all day and they wonder why they're stressed out my mother-in-law right. for example she has anxiety and every time I go to her house, she has CNN on, CNN all day long in the background, like, listen, to all that crap, you know? Mm -hmm. And then she has a panic attack. She's like, she tells me, I don't know why I had a panic attack. I was like, well, my God, you're listening to all that crap. <laughs> I mean, it's all gloom Turn and doom, the gloom and doom. The, the commies failing. Uh, we're going to get in a war with Russia, blah, blah, blah. Somebody just got shot. I mean, come on, you know? They're only going to tell you what's going to make you stressed exactly yeah they're not gonna tell you happy gentle stories no they need to it, get your attention it reminds me of dr schultz said turn off the news he goes he said this is the truth the news will tell you all the bad things that happen but that same day 99 percent of the time people had a good day yes but they don't tell you about that mm -mm. i mean most of my days are good i mean look we're still alive we're still breathing we have good food to eat my family's well my dogs are well, you know, and yeah. for most people, I think they're having a decent day. Right. So. And gratitude. That's a part of it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Focusing on gratitude and all the things that you're thankful for. for that can also help. Mm -hmm. And being like try, trying to live a simple, more simple life. Like you don't have to have the latest iPhone. You don't have to have the best BMW and the three-story house. I mean, what does that really give you you know except more headaches and how am i going to pay for it you know yes i mean i have oh uh, you know i'm not like living in a squalor but i don't have a lot of belongings because i kind of i have some cars and i have some some free weights and things but i don't buy a lot of physical things because it's just a lot of people use that as distraction and it only makes you feel better for a few days. And then you go right back to your stress and your anxiety. And I used to try that. I used to try to buy things to help with anxiety, but it doesn't work either. No. You just have Not to like work you. on your, yeah, work on yourself, do the meditations, control your thoughts, or, you know, try to control the thoughts. There's, it's very complex and look a therapist like and I, i'm talking about a therapist not a medical doctor because they, they want to push drugs on you which i don't want to do 
a good therapist, a good anxiety therapist can be very helpful. You know, it's helped me and uh, just to learn some of the techniques Mm -hmm. to, you know, start to heal the body from this anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, it's all about the different, it's lifestyle factors and, and techniques, like you said. Well, it's funny. I noticed with this guy, he teaches, uh, it's so similar to what you and I teach people. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't do a lot of the nutrition part, but it's it's like steps, you know, things you have to do to heal the body, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, he teaches a lot of what we teach and we throw the food and, and the herbs in, you know, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to end. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for joining us today. If you want to hear more, um, please comment below and let us know what you would like to hear um, about any of those topics. Have you experienced anxiety? Have you found methods that help you or herbs that help you? Um, please share. We'd love to hear from you.